so it's the best end of lamp. The first thing, we've got the layer of skin on the top. Anyone know what it's called on the lamp? Bar. It's called the bark. Well done. And we've got to skin it. Whenever you're skinning an animal like this, taking the bark off, you have to take it from the head to the tail. So how do I know which end of this has come from the end, from the head? Size of it? No. Nope. Um, mm. If you think of where the best end is, what's at one end of it, what's at the other? Head. The head. And what's between the head and the best end that you guys have got to do for your level two synopsis? Shoulder. The shoulder. Okay. And what, what's the main bone in the shoulder, apart from the elbow? Blade. The blade. How's the blade there? There's a little bit at the end of the blade in there so we know that that's the head end so we're going to remove the bark this way and the way of doing that is actually just getting the knife under the bark from the, end, the head end it works so much better this lamb's literally just come out of the fridge it works so much better if um, you can get a grip of it once you've actually got onto the bark what you should be able to do. Once you've loosened it, notice that I've loosened it all the way. Once you get a grip on it, you should be able to remove the bar pretty much in one piece. All right. Now we've got this little bit of a shoulder blade in here that I'm going to remove. Because we don't want that in our lamb cutlets. But apart from that, we're done. Okay, so we've got the two ends of the, of, the, of the best end, and we've got this area here, this bit down the middle, which is the spine. This is half of the spine, because the animal would have sat like that. Okay, and the spine has been sawn through the middle by our butcher. Okay, but what we need to do, we need to remove this spine, and that thing is called chining. Okay, so it's a process called chining, and the best way to do it, is I'm going to scrape the insides of the, of the spine, remove any bits of fat okay. and what I can actually see is that I can see where these bones are if I wiggle these rib bones I can see that just here the end of the bone is moving around what I'm going to do is measure up about a centimetre from there and put a notch and I'm going to do the same on this end you probably can't see it very well but that bone is wiggling around just there where I've got the knife in and I'm going to cut up about a centimetre and I'm basically going to draw a straight line and that's where I'm going to saw through this boat and when you are sawing uh, what you want to do is let the saw do the work so it takes a second to get going but I'm not putting any pressure on it I'm letting the saw actually do it and what I'm not doing is going all the way through because I don't want to cut into the eye of the meat Okay, and ruin it. I'm just doing it, sawing it through enough until I can actually break the bones. So I'm all right at this end. A little bit more to do. First down, until I can actually break through those bones just there. And now I need to remove this chine. So you can see down here, there is a bit of the spine in there that I can go in behind, follow it along. Actually, where I've sawn through. And now remove this chine. Okay. So the two processes we've done so far. Okay. We've removed the bark, and we've removed the chine. What I need to do now is trim up this bit and remove the paddy whack. Anyone tell me what the paddy whack is? You do give it to dogs, yeah. yeah. Mainly on the beef animal, okay. But the paddywhack is the original dog chew. You know the the nursery rhyme, knickknack paddywhack. Give a dog a give bone. Give the dog a bone. They're all butchery. It's a it's a butchery nursery rhyme, really. And on the lamb, it's not very big, but on the um, on the beef, it, it is used to hold the head up, yeah, because it's quite a long tendon, goes about two thirds of the way down the spine. And if it didn't have one of these, okay, which is like a bigger piece of elastic its head would be looking down all the time, it wouldn't be able to look up. So we've removed the, uh, the chine, we've removed that, and now what I want to do is start to 
what we call French trimming. Anyone tell me what French trimming is? We're scraping the bones. We're scraping the bones. Two ways of doing it. The first way is actually to scrape from the inside of the bone. Scrape around it like that, and you can do these individually and actually bring the meat off of the bone and gradually, just with your thumb, push down to get these clean bones off. And you can do them one at a time. But because we're going to trim this bit off, I'm not going to go all the way because I want this bone attached to the cutlet. Okay, so that's what's one way of doing it. The other way is to actually have a look just above the eye of the meat, you've got this little triangle of fat in there and I'm going to put a notch, okay, the same this side, you've got your little triangle of fat above the meat, I'm going to put the notch, what I'm actually going to do is join these two lines together to the bone and the other way of doing it then is to scrape off, scraping down these bones You can see the one that I've already started to do that's out to there. Okay, but while the, the thing is on the board, I can clean these bones up to a certain extent. <coughs> Top and bottom. Notice how well I'm doing it, I'm holding the bone in place with my thumb okay, and I'm scraping against the board. If you try and do it in the air, it's flexing around, it's not going to have enough power to scrape it, so you need to have it against the board or block, whatever you're doing with it. Scraping down the, the bones, okay, and then what I can do carefully is put down in between each bone, scraping against them. So processes so far, just while I finish scraping these up. What have we done? We've uh, taken the bark off. Yep. Um, taken the chine out. Yep. Uh, taken that little bit of shoulder blade out. We took the little bit of shoulder blade out, yep. Um, and then we've French trimmed. Removed the paddy whack. Removed the paddy whack yeah, and we've French trimmed. Yeah. Okay, so now, I mean, I'm not going to do it all, but each individual bone now can just be finished off, a little bit of a scrape, again still against the block, okay, until they're nice and clean. Okay, So now what I want to do, I want to trim up this fat, because if I'm doing this as Rex of lamb, there's quite a lot of fat on here, I do want some fat on it because it's all flavour and it protects it, but if it's really thick layer of fat, then um, it's, it's still going to be on there and it's going to be fatty lamb, so I'm just going to trim down the amount of fat, depending on the time of year and how young the lambs are and things, when, it, when you get the nice spring lambs, there's hardly any fat on them so there's no need to trim it. But this time of year we're getting towards the stage where we're going to be getting hoggets. Anyone tell me what a hoggett is? Between uh, a lamb and a Yeah, it's basically what it is. A, a mutton, okay, a sheep uh, that's called mutton, is actually two years or older lamb is up to a year old so for that second year of its life it's what we call hogget it's a slightly darker meat still tender like lamb I prefer it to lamb at times certain times of the year obviously not the spring lamb but um, lovely piece of meat the hogget and this these are getting quite big now these lambs okay so uh, they're almost getting towards the stage where they're they're hoggets so what I'm trying to do is trim down some of this fat and then so it renders nicely score it so that when you've got it into your pan we can render out a lot more of this fat we can crisp it up before the rack gets then put into the oven to finish roasting last thing I'll need to do is trim all the bones to the same length and the required length that we've got okay. so I'm going to grab a bit of meat this is just for health and safety the clean film really mm. because I want to cut these all to the same length so I'm going to wrap these around with the cling film on the ends. 
And notice I've still got the lamb facing downwards because I want the bones against the board. And what I can do, put my knife on there, and just a good tap with the steel is actually going to trim all these bones. Why do you think I wrapped the cling film around it? Because it's falling off. Yeah. It's not that it would shatter, but these little bit of bones would be firing <laughs> all over the kitchen. Oh, yeah, I see that. So, just by trimming through here. What we've got, and I've still got to scrape these bones up, but you don't need to watch me do that. Okay, but that's how we would turn it into our racks of lamb, which we can then cut into two or three bone racks, however we're going to do them, or roast them as a whole. When you're cooking, you put foil around the bones, eh? You can put foil around the bones, yeah, to stop them burning and browning up. Okay, and that's it.